My favorite governor in the history of governors. You really do kind of have a Governor Michael Dukakis crush, don't you? He was like the first person you paid attention to in politics, when right? I, in presidential 19- politics. In 1988, I was 16, mm-hmm. and that was the first time I really paid attention to a presidential election. And that was the election between Governor Michael Dukakis, our guest, who we'll talk to in a moment, mm-hmm. and then former Vice President George Bush. And I really was, you know, I was a kid. I was really into politics, and I really had... Uh, my heart and soul was in that campaign that was run by Governor Dukakis. I really was touched by that campaign. And, and that's what motivated me as a young person, I think, to have such an interest in politics and maybe what made me a talk show host. It's very funny because you and I share a lot of connections. And in my sixth grade class, the election from Governor Michael Dukakis and, of course, Vice President George H.W. Bush was the first one I paid attention to as a sixth grader. We had a class election. I remember thinking it was the coolest thing. And I am so embarrassed to tell you this. Tell me, tell me. I was the only person in my class that voted for Jesse Jackson. Well, because everybody... But Governor Dukakis won. Every, so there's, there's the good news for see, the governor. See that? <laughs> governor, you won in Jennifer's class and you won in my Jesse class Jackson, too. Jesse Jackson, who was well, I, I did, Governor? I didn't, I didn't win the final. <laughs> <laughs> we are so lucky to have at UCLA, uh, the School of Public Policy, where he teaches public policy, uh, Governor Dukakis and uh, Mrs. Dukakis. It was my thrill uh, to meet you, Governor, and Mrs. Dukakis at UCLA. UCLA when you invited me to uh, uh, sit in on one of your lectures last year. That was a thrill for me again, so thank you very much for that. It was fun to have you. It seems that, in my opinion, the more bizarre President Trump gets, the more off the reservation he, he steps, the closer Republicans like Paul Ryan gel to him. What's going on, Governor? I haven't the slightest idea. I haven't the slightest idea, Brian. I mean, this tax bill is the worst piece of legislative garbage I've ever seen. How so? How so, Governor? Well, because thing, I'm getting more money back in my paycheck. Why yeah, is it yes so bad? Yes, you are, and our national deficit is going up and up and up. I mean, this is crazy. But We're don't you think it's a little employment. funny that now Democrats are the ones worried about spending? That, t- that That's a reversal of roles. I don't know that that's always typically the place of Democrats to be worried about spending. You have a lot more revenue coming into the government to offset all of that no, spending. But no, no, no. You, you, you're throwing another uh, trillion dollars out the window. I mean, we're going to have an annual budget deficit 10 years from now, at the rate we're going, of a trillion and a half dollars. Um, Jennifer, do you know what we're spending on interest in the national debt right now every year? I don't know Any the number idea? offhand. Not offhand. Fill Half me in. a trillion. Yeah. Just on interest. Mm. And this is a country that had a balanced budget, two back-to-back surpluses under Bill Clinton. Mm-hmm. And Clinton in his last year, nobody remembers this, only us old guys, I guess. <laughs> um, Clinton, in his State of the Union address, his last address said, look, um, we've come back from deficit land. We're now at full employment. We have had two back-to-back surpluses. By the way, the first time in 50 years that it ever happened under a Democratic governor, but with a Republican Congress. Had Al Gore become president, of course he won, but under this crazy electoral college system, he he didn't take office. (laughs) Had Gore won, this country would be virtually debt-free. The the Democratic Party has to do some real soul-searching for 2020 and find the right candidate because this Trump phenomenon, and that's all I can think to call it, Governor, is very unpredictable. Uh, what, what very quickly, as we're up against uh, the clock here, what should be uh, the game plan, Governor Dukakis, for Democrats if they seriously seek to beat a, a President Trump running for re-election in 2020? Well, let me say, first, I think the man is very vulnerable. That doesn't mean he's going to be easy, but I think he's very vulnerable. And he gets more vulnerable every day. Now, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to have a good, open primary, just the way we did in 1988, Brent, where we had, what, seven candidates? Yeah, yeah. Some interesting folks, not just myself. (laughs) That's exactly. Uh, Paul uh, Simon. Biden, (laughs) Dick Kebhardt. Yeah, you had them all in there. Jackson, we had an interesting group. Wasn't Paul Simon? from that. Paul Simon, or he was, he was. 84? Uh, Paul Simon he was, was part there. of it as well. All good people. Now, I ran a great primary campaign. I'm sorry to say not a very good final campaign. Sorry about that, since you guys were both my supporters. I well, you, well, you know, except, well, for, except for Jennifer. Yeah, well, you know, but you know, look, look at it this way. You, she was but, really out there. But I still respect you, Governor. I was out there. I don't know what happened to me. I'm a Trump voter. I was voting for Jesse Jackson in the sixth grade. What I, happened? Every day, we, t- we try to fix each other every day. It's, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's well, like a marriage. Other, though. Governor, but it's like in a... Any event, it's like, you know, a winner's going to emerge, yeah. and then uh, 
the Democratic Party, I hope with the strong support of uh, uh, the American people, are going to toss this guy out and, and, and bring back responsible government, and by the way, fiscally responsible government, as well as progressive government. Well, we got to hit you with a name or two. What yeah, about somebody, somebody like Joe Biden running for president, Governor Dukakis? I think, I think Joe would a great, be a great choice. He's, he's older. Uh, running for the presidency <laughs> is not an old person's game. Doesn't mean that I don't have a lot of respect for him. Um, we'll see. I don't know whether he's interested. I mean, we've gotten indications that he's not, uh, but he's a first-rate person. On the other hand, we've got a, a flock of potentially good candidates. Who they're going to be, who runs, who emerges as the nominee, that's all in the future. First things first. We've got to clean these folks' clock in this in this congressional election. In 2018. Do you think you will? Back. In all seriousness, Governor, do you think the House or the Senate will flip or both bodies? If you're looking no, into the no crystal idea. ball. I have no idea. I think there's going to be a lot of focus on the House, um, but there will be on the Senate races as well. Uh, one of those houses has got to go Democratic, and, and I think you're seeing an enormous amount of activity out there now. I mean, it's really, uh, really very impressive, but... Nobody's going to hand it to us, no. and, uh, and nobody's going to hand it to the American people. I mean, we got to go out there. We've got to compete. We've got to get into the grassroots, precinct-based organization, no fooling around, and uh, win this thing. It's Governor Mike Dukakis. I like to say my friend, Governor Mike Dukakis, because you're so gracious to me when I met you at UCLA. And, um, and, uh, well, it's not difficult to be gracious. Somebody ought to tell the President of the United States that. <laughs> He's not a very gracious guy. I He's would agree with you. He's an insulting guy. Uh, you, and my... I don't know why he does this stuff. Uh, yeah, well, it's, it's just it's... so maddening. You know, uh, let, him not... let him Let him vent. I'm letting let you vent, Governor. Let, go let, ahead. let the Governor vent. You, you, could, you could be strong and be nice. <laughs> Uh, uh, Ronald Reagan. You know, getting up yesterday and going after those sheriff's deputies, a guy who was a notorious draft dodger all during Vietnam, never served a day of his life in the military, and now tells us he's going to walk in there unarmed and solve problems. Well, I mean, it's hard to say. We don't break. know what his actions would be. Uh, it, look, we can talk about his draft dodging, but the, still that sheriff, Scott Israel, has a, has a lot of questions to answer. I think we can probably all agree on that. But Jennifer, don't tell me you're going to walk in there unarmed. Uh, know, this guy, I, this guy I hope that would, I would try to do would something. Serve a day of his life in the military. The problem is I the mean, sheriff please. was armed and he stayed outside. The, the sheriff was armed. <laughs> that know, is the problem. He actually well, could he have neutralized he thought the shots were coming from outside. Yeah, yeah. he does say that. Okay, uh, Governor Mike Dukakis, uh, we have you here in Southern California. Do you, you stay until March, don't you, before you go back home? April the sixth. April the, the 6th. spring freeze. I've okay, got <laughs> lots of final exams to read and grade. Okay. Oh my gosh! All can right. you imagine? You know, I teach. I don't sit around here. I know. I know that. What course do you teach? I, say, I teach two courses, and I teach a lot, but I love teaching. I love working with these kids. And incidentally, Brian, one of the interesting things about what's going on out there yeah. is that in an interesting kind of way, Trump has really turned on these young people to public service. It's true. I mean, they're pouring into my office. They want to talk about it. how do you get started, what do we do, can we do internships, this, that, and the other thing. It's very exciting. And the other day, we had one of our alumni back. Wonderful. Of course. Wonderful. Jimmy Gomez. Jimmy Justin Gomez. Gino got elected to Congress. He was in the court. Justin White showed up late? <laughs> oh, Jennifer doesn't like him either. Go ahead, Governor. Well, Go ahead, let me Governor. Tell you, Jennifer. This kid, you know, the youngest kid uh, in a family of Mexican immigrants. A great <laughs> came success. In my classroom. There was something about him. I brought him in, talked with him. Graduated magna cum laude from UCLA after transferring from Riverside Community College. Got a master's at the Kennedy School at Harvard, came back, Yep. Uh, ran, as you know, for the Assembly, got elected. He's now in the Congress of the United States. Well, that's America at its best, as you, far as I'm you ought to be very Ideology aside. Yeah, that's right. Governor Mike Dukakis, great to talk to you. Thank and, you, Governor. And uh, we really do appreciate the Absolutely. back and forth. Okay, uh, uh, I hope to run into you sometime soon. Anytime, come on over. All right, I'm going to take you up on it. Let's Thank go to the you. cafeteria. Be here until the first week in April. Okay, Jennifer and I will email you. We'll come over. Both of you come over. I okay. would love it. All right. Thank you, Governor Dukakis. We'll have lunch with Kitty and Ooh. have a good time. We love that. Oh, we love it. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. Governor Mike Dukakis, he is a great guy. You're having lunch with the Dukakis. Hey, look, I respect the heck out of Governor Dukakis. I don't think I agree with him very much, but, you know, that's part of the, that's just uh, part of the debate here. That's part of the conversation, and that's okay.